so welcome back uh, so in the last video we have seen that we can set the price and we can uh, get the price here right uh, hold on we have not set the we have not set the price yet because we are getting zero what we'll do is we'll just cut this part and we'll keep it here so that we can use it later i mean we can refer it later and now the main concern is how to set the price now there is one way to set the prices. Let's say I don't want to set the price as zero. I want to set the price as something, maybe, maybe fifty or hundred. So what we can do is we can actually use constructors because basically when you talk about enum, indirectly enum gets converted into a class, and inside that class we have multiple objects, right? So we have Apple, Samsung, HTC. Those are actually objects, and when you talk about objects, something comes to your mind, which is constructor, right? So can we create a constructor here and the answer is yes. So we can create a constructor here, we can say mobile. Uh, so that's how we create a constructor and we can specify some price here. We'll say price uh, equal to 80, right? So now this price will be assigned for each and every object, right? For Apple, Samsung and HTC will be having the same price. Now just to prove that this constructor is getting called for every object, let me just print something here, let's say hi or not high, let's say constructor, just to have that stuff. Now every time, if I, if I run this code, every time we will be getting three, I mean, we'll be getting three objects. So for this three objects, it will call this constructor three times. So every time it creates an object. So that, that simply means the number of constants defines, defines the, uh, defines your, uh, I mean, defines the number of constructor, number of time the constructor will be called. Right, so that's how you call a constructor here. Now, uh, I don't want to set the price for, so if you can see the price for Apple was 80. I don't want to set the price for Apple as 80. I want to set the price for Samsung as 80. So that's the default value. But for Apple, I want the value to be 100. And for HTC, the value should be 90. So we can specify the value something in this way. So we can specify the constant and we can, we can give a round back and we can specify the value. Now, if you can convert this into this line, this is actually like specifying 100 here. So we are passing the 100 in the constructor. But hold on, to accept that, we need a constructor which can accept an integer. So we can do that. We can create a constructor which takes an integer value and we'll say this is P and we can set the price of P, right? So this value 100 and 90 will be coming here. And now if you run this, we'll be getting 100. Uh, but we got only one constructor is because for Samsung, we are printing the value, right? This is the, this will, so this will call the parameterized constructor. Samsung will call the default constructor because we're not specifying the value there. And for HTC, we are specifying uh, this constructor here, right? So that's how we can, we can assign constructors to the class, I mean to enum. Now the awesomeness about, about enum is we don't we just don't have get price method. We also have some other methods. If I say control space, can you see that we have compare to method? We have we'll see why we have compare to, we have get price, we have equals, we have hash code, we have ordinal. Hold on, from where all these methods are coming? So the answer is every enum in Java extends a class called as enum. So every enum extends a class called as enum. So we we do have a class called as enum in Java, which belongs to java.lang package. If you can see, it belongs to java.lang package. And so we have a class enum, which is an abstract class. That means no other class can, uh, I mean, we cannot create object of, uh, object of enum here. So we have enum, which implements comparable and it, it implements realizable. That means we can store the state of an object of enum. And this enum has lots of methods to work with. We have ordinal as a method. And we have lots of methods to work with. Right? So we can print the ordinal. So we can print the ordinal. So what is ordinal means? Ordinal means the order. So if I print the ordinal of Apple, it will print zero because that's the ordinal for Apple, zero. Samsung would be one because that's the next one. So it, it goes in a sequence. So it goes in a sequence. So if I print the ordinal for Samsung, it will print one. So every all these constants have a number. So this is zero, this is one, and this is two. This is same like creating an array or a collection. So that's an ordinal. 
that means if this constants here has an ordinal that means we can fetch all these constants together right something in this way let's say i don't know the what i do, so i know the i, I know there's something called as mobile enum but i don't know how many uh, how many co constants we have so what we can do we can fetch all the constants will be, which will become an array now how do we create how do we fetch the constant we can simply say mobile dot values so we do have this method called as values, which is which is getting fetched from. Uh, it will fetch all the values from from the enum, and it will store inside this m. Now, how to print that? Well, we can use enhanced for loop here for that matter. We can say m, or we can say mobile uh, mobile colon m, and we can print individual mobile here. We can say mobile. Right, that's how we can print we can print all the constants we got apple samsung and stc so this values is a method which will fetch all the constants now the awesome thing is if i click on this value can you see that we cannot click on this value does it belong to this mobile mobile enum no we don't have any method called as value uh, let's go to enum do we have a value method here let me just type values Okay, it's not there. It's not there. Can you can you see that we don't have any method called as values here? So this is something. So this is something magical in Java. Uh, so values is a method which is given by your compiler or your JVM. This is not there inside enum. Not even there in object class. Not even there in this enum. Okay. And awesome thing is this this enum class extends the object class. So all the methods from the object class is coming directly to this enum and from enum it is coming to this enum. Okay, so this enum already extends the enum class. Now does that mean can we extend some another class? If I create another class, let's say I have a class demo here. Can I, can I, can this enum, okay we already have a demo somewhere so let me just say demo 1. Can you say uh, enum extends demo one. Uh, that's not possible. We cannot use extends keyword here because extends because this already extends the enum class, right? So we cannot uh, extend demo one also. How about interface? Uh, if this demo one is an interface, let's try. Let's say implements demo one. Does that work? And that works. That means your enum can implement the interface that is possible okay so this is some some points you have to remember so enum impl, enum can implement the interface and we can we have seen the values method we have seen the ordinal methods so that's it from this video we have talked about a lot of features we have talked about the constructors we have talked about ordinal method we have talked about values and yeah that's it